Welcome back, everybody. My guest tonight is an Emmy award-winning writer, producer, and creator of such shows as Insecure and Grownish. He now hosts a new talk show on Peacock called Wilmore. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Larry Wilmore. Hello, Larry. How are you? Hey, Stephen. So good to see you. I like the way you said Peacock. Peacock. That nice. That's the NBC yeah. thing, right? NBC streaming yeah, thing? That's the new streaming thing that is free. It costs no money. It costs no uh, money? That's a that's a tough well, business model. Let's just say the entry level is free. Let's really? say that. Hold on one second. Does CBS have one of those? What do we have? We have a... Uh, access. It's not called All Access anymore. It's called like Paracock or something, isn't it? Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Okay. Just had to put that in yeah. there legally. Larry... I think it was called CBS Questionable Access. Uh, <laughs> you like, predicted... I, I just want to. I just want to lay something at your feet right here. You predicted in yeah. 2016 that Trump would win. You were one of the few people who was like, "Nope, this doesn't yeah. smell right. He's gonna. He's he's gonna do it." Yeah. Uh, last month, you said there is no way Trump can beat Biden. How are you feeling about that prediction now, Larry? One more. I I feel good about it. Um, I feel like he can't beat Biden. The only way, only thing he can do is cheat Biden. Is what I was the other part of that. You know. Okay. Um, and it feels like what he's trying to do in Pennsylvania was an example of that. Trying to stop people from actually counting the votes while they're in progress. Stephen, I have never seen anything like that. It's it's unbelievable. Well, the argument could be made that we all have a right to vote. There's nothing that says right to count, Larry. You know, that's true, unless you are the count. And he would insist that everyone should count. That is true. But he gets he usually gets around seven and just starts laughing and can't help himself anymore. <laughs> that's about as far as he usually gets. Uh, uh, he kind of uh, wears uh, uh. He, he wears himself out because he laughs at his own jokes. That's the problem with the count. Now the Trump campaign. I was talking with uh, my friend Charlamagne the God the other day about this on the election show. He's saying the, the the Trump campaign actually reached out to black men and had some success yeah. there. It was marginal, but there was some su success there. Did, were you were you surprised that there was some success there? And do you gr do you agree that there was some success there? Well. <laughs> I would say that Trump had success with black men voter in the same way that jumping gets you closer to the sun, you know? I mean, <laughs> I guess. I mean. Technically. Technically. But you're not you, in NASA. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, once they actually measure it, you know, you come up with real numbers that give you a little more context, let's say, and clarity. What gives you hope right now, Larry? What's what's making you feel good? This is gonna sound a little corny, Stephen, but I really do believe in the American people as a whole. You know, I feel like we've been resilient through so many things. We've had like horrible things happen, and then our resiliency kind of takes over. Remember in the 60s, as bad as it was, we had the Voting Rights Act, we had the Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to the moon for, <laughs> for goodness sake, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we just have these horrible things we have to deal with, but I think as a group, we find a way, and I'm really, Stephen, I'm so inspired by our young people today. They're involved in ways I never thought of when I was 19, 20 in that age. Mm -hmm. You know, the way they care about the future gives me a lot of hope. So. Yeah, my children are far more uh, socially and politically conscious than I ever was. And I was a, perf I and I was a perfect child. <laughs> yes, but Stephen, we could have gone to jail <laughs> for what we just innocently did back then for what you really can't even do these days. Right, because you know? there'd be a record of it. Somebody would have recorded that thing that I jumped over in that other thing <laughs> while That's I was holding point. that thing in my hand. And you exactly. can't prove anything I just said because nobody recorded it. There's no evidence of the thing. New show. Ready? That's yes. called a segue. New show on Peacock <laughs> called Wilmore. Not your first foray into late night, uh, Lawrence. How is it different than the, 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 all the other late night stuff you've done? The biggest difference is it's currently on the air. Okay. That's the big thing. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> currently, that, that, it does help. It does have yeah. on air, so I can't, it can be watched. Okay, good. That's right, it can currently be watched. Yes. I think I was purged on Comedy Central. I can't even find the episode, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, look, the, but seriously, the show came about kind of in the, in this wake of the George Floyd moment, and I was talking to the people at Peacock, I'm working over at Universal, and they said, it'd be great for you to get back on the air and kind of respond to this, like have that conversation mm -hmm. with America that it says it wants to have and yes. kind of build the show around that. So so that's the space that we're in, and we, we've been using the election as a way. Now, keep in mind, we're doing it as a special, really. We're only doing 11 episodes. 
and we're kind of using the election as a way to kind of have that conversation. And then after we're done, I think we have like three or four more episodes. We're going to look at it and see if we want to do it as a series going forward. And then obviously the Christmas episode. Yes, of course. <laughs> from from <Yes>. Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Well, you say that, but yours are legendary. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Hey, I got yeah, a question about it. the uncomfortable conversation thing. Is yes. that uh, this this spring and this summer, I had a lot of uh, black guests on the show, and we had uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. And there's there's sort of the proverbial suggestion from Black America to White America is like you need to be you need to have that uncomfortable conversation. You need to mm -hmm. want that uncomfortable conversation, and it's incumbent upon us to be ready for that uncomfortable conversation. I got a question about that term, uncomfortable conversation. I understand in ways that that's uncomfortable for white people. Is yeah. that a two-way uncomfortability? Are black people uncomfortable in their own way or are they uncomfortable at how uncomfortable we are during that conversation? That's it. Uh, we only want you to be uncomfortable. It gives us so much joy. <laughs> Mission accomplished, Larry. Stephen, we don't care about Juneteenth. We want you to be uncomfortable to figure out why you think it's important. Why is to there us. a picnic happening over there today? <laughs> yes. Why is there a picnic happening over there? <laughs> Quick. Yes, we've got to do, we've got to do better. There's July teenth too, you guys. You got to honor that. What? Where did that what? come from? <laughs> yes. October ninth. Okay. Exactly. Talking about race. Um, uh, I already asked that one. That's the black people uncomfortable one. Sorry about that. I apologize. This part will be edited out, Larry. Exactly. No or leave it. Or leave it in. Honesty. This is the uncomfortable I'll part. I'll use it on my show. I'll put it on Peacock. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> um, not many people know this. I happen to know this. Yeah. Um, but you have a lifelong hobby, which is magic. I do. Which is I, that is that is, is fantastic. Who's that over your shoulder? That is uh, Herman. He was one of my favorite magicians growing up. And that's a, a real interesting picture where he has a young black assistant. Um, and then uh, I just always loved that poster, you know, so there you go. How did you first get into magic, Larry? You know, I saw a magician. I was in, it was called the Indian Y Guide. It was like a form, a, like a Cub Scout thing. You, It was actually pretty cool. You learned about Native culture, Native oh, American it, culture. It, yeah, yeah Indian, the Indian Scouts of the Y. Yeah, I did that. Exactly, you know, and you go with your dad or your mom, you know. And I remember there was a magician there. He cut a rope in half and he, he made a knot and took it off. And my little seven-year-old brain just couldn't accept that. And I cut up so many ropes or whatever was around. I, I don't think my parents were happy about that, right? Until I figured out at least how I could do it. And my parents gave me a magic set for Christmas and I was hooked. hooked so ever are, since. are you still... Are you still uh... You still oh, doing yeah. it even during Zoom time because magic is All tough. The time. I always have cards on me. Always wow. practicing. Always doing something. You want to see something now? Yes, I would. Okay. All right. See. So, uh, let's say I'm, it's kind of awkward, so I'll do it like this. As I go through here, just say stop somewhere. Stop. Right here. Sure. Take a look. Can I, you see that I, card? I, I see it. I see the card. Yes. Even keep in mind, you could have chosen any of these cards. You could have said stop anywhere, and. Uh, most of the time when magicians do tricks, they do a lot of sleight of hand, shuffle the cards, all of that kind of stuff too. Sure. I'm not gonna do that. In fact, what I'm gonna do, Stephen, I'm going to wrap this deck in a rubber band and not allow my hands to do any sleight of hand at all. And we're gonna find your card in the amount of time it takes to say, mm, how about President-elect Biden? Okay. Okay. That's, okay so that makes me say, that makes me nervous to hear, but go ahead. It makes us nervous. That's the whole point of this trick. We we wanted to make us nervous. Okay, so is this part of that uncomfortable both? conversation? It's, this is it. We're having it right this is now. the one I was supposed to have with black people. It's not the subject that I thought. You were so afraid of it. And oh this wow! Is the, the this is actually party. kind of fun. Okay. You should have had this months ago. I was trying to tell you when you weren't returning my calls. Remember, and yeah. you were nervous. Cause you thought I was calling you to have that talk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what, okay. so right. what happens now? On the count of three, I'll say President-elect Biden. Okay. I'll say it, okay? Yeah. Okay? You remember what your card was? Yes, I do. You ready? One, two, three, President-elect Biden. Whoa! What? Is that your card? Yes! Is that it? That is, that is actually there. impressive. Yeah. That's well, impressive to me, even if you knew what my card was. Just that you could do you. that is impressive to me. That's what I'm talking about. See? Wow. That's the conversation that we had to have, Stevie, right there. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry I put it off for so long, Larry. 
and, and for all the other things that white people are sorry for. <laughs> Folks, you can catch a new episode of Wilmer this Saturday on Peacock. Larry Wilmore, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Laura Benanti.